you know, we covered Hassan on the ideology merchandise mm. line and editor Andy put that up on the YouTubes. So we got another round of commentary on it. And I know there's no point to mention this every time this happens, but I'm, I just want to say once or twice that you then get a round of people saying, oh, you know, is he really profiting because he's like, th there are costs for unionized labor and blah, blah, blah. And in one case, Matt, people saying he actually, he donates all of his profits from his clothing line to strike funds. He doesn't make a penny from it. Mm. Mm. You idiots. Did you not do your research? Do you not understand? You know, we, we had the usual thing where the people simply repeat the thing about the guy popping out of the well. That's the main response. It's just like, <laughs> yes. yeah. you don't understand socialism. You don't understand <laughs> socialism. Right. He's just, That's right. You have, you have to, he's participating in capitalism in order to undermine it. It takes time and you have to really participate. You have to get into capitalism. And it's like... You need the sports cars. You need the mansion. You need the fashion label. All of this... Uh, it, he's playing the long game. We, we get it. We get it. To defeat consumerist culture, you must first become consumerist culture. <laughs> That's the thing. It's, uh, you know, Sun Tzu. It, know your enemy by first becoming your enemy. So, so that that's the main one. It's fine. It's totally fine to to, to be doing all this, and it is fine, right? We're just saying it's inconsistent with being a a, a, yeah. a communist revolutionary. That's all. But but the second the second line of defense yeah. is Chris. So the a, a more rare defense for Hassan was that he donates all the proceeds to strike funds and to support unionized workers and whatnot. And the claim was made not just that he has done that, but that he does it entirely. All of the funds that he earns go mm. to strike funds. If that were true, I would say that you and I would definitely have to eat humble pie. At least it would be consistent, right? If, if all of the profits that he was making, he was investing into support stuff that aligns yeah. with his ideology, that would be a defense, right? Uh, for what, what you're up to. You're just essentially using the tools of your master to take mm. down their house, mm. right? So I asked the person that raised this for more details about this, because I had looked into it before we commented, but they were like, you didn't even check. You didn't even understand where the profits go. And they said, you know, you can just check his Twitter. Hassan has talked about this a lot. So I did check Hassan's Twitter, and all I could find was reference to him donating around... 100,000 or 126,000 dollars to strike funds. Now, that sounds like a lot, but I also find articles mentioning that. But that is certainly not all of Hassan's profit from his merch line. In fact, that was the amount that he earned in one day when he released a merch line a couple of years ago. And this was covered in a whole bunch of things, you know, like kind of sites that cover influencer culture. So I knew that he did make a donation or maybe a couple of donations, but there was nothing in those articles about him now donating all proceeds moving forward or that he is not taking any profit from his merch line. Nowhere did he say that. And so I could find absolutely no support for that. And eventually when the person did provide details, they just said, there's an article on Game Rant and the Game Rant article is just talking about that one-off donation he meant. But the mm. thing which that made me think about, which is kind of broader principle, is like the gurus, you know, they themselves are a little bit shameless or whatever. They can make claims or they can, you know, exaggerate things or whatever. But their fans are sometimes way more extreme <laughs> than they are. Like Hassan has not said, to my knowledge, I can't find anywhere where he said, I don't need all income from this to, you yeah. know, strike funds. But some of his fans have that kind of impression. And I've seen the same sentiment on other, you know, sites occasionally mentioned. And it's impressive because it's it's kind of like people are going much farther than the gurus. Even mm -hmm. they will go in, you know, whatever they're claiming. And Hassan does it, but it's just, it happens quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it speaks to a broader point, as you say, of um, the psychological distortions 
that we do, the sort of contortions we put ourselves through in order to make things consistent and neat for us. So if you're a fan of Hassan's, you want to believe that he is what he says he is. So you you wave away these kinds of inconsistencies and e- even to the point where you, you believe a, a, th- a kind of a fiction, that something which isn't documented anywhere, that the person who mentioned it to you can't point to any place where this information actually came from, but they choose to believe it. I mean, I think there's an exact parallel with what seems to me like this incredibly naive trust amongst the you know fans of Jordan Peterson or Brett Weinstein or whatever, Andrew Tate, you name it, which is that they will say that, oh no, these people are just wanting to help us. He's, yeah. Jordan Peterson just cares deeply about young people. He's not in it for himself. He doesn't care about the fame or the money or any of those things. He's on a, he's on a mission to make the world better. And his fans truly believe that. And, um, and it's true of pretty much all of our gurus. And um, it seems to an outsider to be an incredibly naive <laughs> interpretation yeah. of some of his motivations. And so it should be no surprise that you see it with Hassan Piker's fans as well. Because it, it came up as well when we were covering Andrew Huberman like a couple of months back. Because remember when we covered him, we made the point that there's a lot of ambiguity about donations, right? Because his podcast was called the Huberman Lab and his lab at Stanford was called the Huberman Lab. But he was like, but these are separate and you can donate to the Huberman Lab or you can join membership at the Huberman Lab. But it's like, they're all branded very similarly. And some of the proceeds from donations will be used to support like research. It's not quite clear. And and there's no reporting like there's no sort of regular hey we no you can't you can go to his website and see where he's made like he does document we've donated some amount of money to support this researcher but there's it's not accounting right there's not like we received yeah. donations of x amount and we donated this amount or huberman sponsors right equate to this and we donate 70 percent no 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 just amounts that look kind of big donated but there's no relative comparison but when we raised that point people were like that's not what he's about right like he's not about profiteering or that kind of it but like Huberman is making huge amounts of money with his podcast and his advertising and the fact that he can also cast it as being about philanthropy like research philanthropy that's extremely convenient right and so Yes, he will support research, but uh, yeah. what yeah. proportion of the amount yeah. goes towards that? Or right. yeah, to all the sweet summer children who don't understand how the world works, let me let me explain. There are companies like, for instance, Shell, that will spend quite a bit of money on very nice advertisements that that feature children smelling flowers and grassy fields, and they do that for a reason and in those advertisements they'll probably talk about some genuine donations that they've made to sustainable energy or clean water or on things like that and they're real donations it's real money and if they they print the numbers they may look like large numbers but this is an exercise this is a tiny proportion the gambling industry in australia a big part of its legitimacy is is that they take chris some of these Mm. profits and they give them back to the community they they support local sports teams they they, mm. they have like like prizes and funds and things set up for young people. Um, they don't talk very much about the infinitesimal percentage <laughs> that those uh, charitable donations make up of their actual income. And I don't think anyone would be so naive to think that the gambling industry or the Shell, the, the oil company, have are on a mission to make the world a better place, and that's their primary motivating factor. And and yet and yet. When it comes to these influences, whether it's Huberman or Jordan Peterson or, or uh, Hassan Piker, somehow because of the parasocial relationship and because they've developed like a personal ideology that, that their fans have committed to and invested in, they will bend over backwards to suspend disbelief and turn themselves into the most naive chumps that has ever walked the planet. Even as the people buy mansions and drive around in sports cars. Doesn't matter. And, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's shocking. Or in in the case of Hassan as well, there was a leak just talking about you know the amount that he earns from 
Twitch. And it was a lot. And that is not including all the other stuff <laughs> that he's getting, right? So yeah, but people mm -hmm. are just it, like, it, there were various, various comments, like people saying, you know, He's just trying to be sustainable. I think he's sustainable already. <laughs> I think he'll get by. I think he's, I think he's gonna make it, guys. Don't worry, he's okay. So yeah, it's kind of remarkable the level of faith that people have. Not not cynical souls, these people. At least not about very select individuals. At least mm. that's mm. a way to put it. Yes. Very, very, very cynical when it comes to those other guys, but not our, not our favorite. But those guys, guys are bad guys, though. So that stands, <laughs> stands the reason.